Hello and welcome to Shannon Gardens. Thank you guys so much for joining me. So today I wanted to focus on attracting hummingbirds to the garden as they're starting their spring migration through Georgia. This is about the time of year that I go ahead and fill those feeders. And I'm also adding a few plants that are known to attract hummingbirds that I was anticipating adding to my garden. Now I'm going to be adding those two containers today because we're still a little bit inside of that freeze date. And so I want to give it maybe a couple of weeks. And then as we move out of the freeze threat and get beyond on that date a little bit, I will actually decide at that point if I'm going to move them to the garden or keep them in containers for the time being. Now, because I don't really have a lot of blooming flowers right now, they are prepping and getting ready to bloom. I wanted to go ahead and just add some flowers from the local nursery that I could put in the containers that will help feed those hummingbirds along with my feeders. So first I thought that we'd start with the feeder and I'd show you guys what kind I use that I prefer the most out of the ones that I've tried. And that is this glass container here. So it just unscrews at the base. I hope that you guys can see that. And then you can take it out. Now I actually prefer this kind of top that has more of a hole here, the flower with the hole. I really don't like the yellow grid kind that have the little yellow grid here because I find that they're so hard to clean. I find that these are a lot easier. I have a small brush here and you can just poke those through the hole to clean those. Um, before I had my brush, I actually used Q-tips. So it's whatever you have that works for you. But these are the types of feeders that I prefer. Now I don't buy store-bought food. I do make my own food for the hummingbirds and it's really easy to make. It is just four parts of water to one part white granulated sugar and I just heat up the water and then put the sugar in and stir it until it dissolves and cools and then I put it in my feeder. So I've already got that that I've made and I'm going to add it to my feeder. So this is one cup of water and I added a quarter cup of the granulated white sugar to that. All right, so I've got it added here. Now this feeder has an ant moat at the top where you put water in there and that helps prevent ants from getting it to your food. I actually double up on my ant moats because there are so many ants and I find that sometimes maybe this isn't full or, or it's evaporated in the summer. So I like to double up on my ant moats. So I have one here that I also fill with water and then I attach it to the top and hang it from my hanger. So that's just a suggestion if you guys struggle with that too, you can add an additional ant moat as well. Now I'm speaking about hummingbirds. There's one other thing that I wanted to share with you guys that I have, and this is something that I got last year. This is a hummingbird ring and you just pop the top off and put a little bit of your solution in there and then pop the top back on and it attracts hummingbirds. I tried this last year and if you guys wait until the end of the video, I'll show you video of that and the hummingbirds coming up to it. It was so exciting and it took probably about 20 minutes for the hummingbirds to come up and get used to me sitting out there with this on, but it was really, really exciting. So I'll share that with you guys at the end of this video. So as far as the plants that I'm planting in the container, I may have mentioned this earlier, but these are plants that I was intending upon adding in my garden anyway. And once I saw them at my local gardening center, I decided to go ahead and pick those up and put them in containers. And that way they're available. If I do have some of those early hummingbirds coming through before everything else starts blooming, then they have something in addition to the hummingbird food that I've put in the feeders. So I'll show you guys the plants that I picked up. So first I have the Dianthus Pink Kisses and just look at the pretty color there. It's very, very springy. And all of these plants that I picked up are perennials because I am placing them or more than likely will be placing them in my perennial garden. So I've got a couple of these here. And then I have this pretty Dianthus, look at those colors. And that is the Capitan, I believe I'm saying that correctly, purple and white. And I'll put the name on the screen as well. And then I have this Salvia that I absolutely love Salvia. I have a lot of it in my garden and I've done a video on Salvia that I'll link in the description if you're interested in taking a look at that. But I got some more Salvia here, which the hummingbirds love. 
And then I also got this Speedwell and just look at the purple color there. It's so vibrant to me. And that's another one that attracts hummingbirds. Now Speedwell is something that I planted last year in my perennial garden toward the end of summer. And it bloomed for a really long time, uh, well after things had faded out in my perennial garden and actually stayed evergreen all winter long. So I was pretty impressed and I knew I wanted to add more. So I'm going to get the these planted and as I'm planting I'll tell you a little bit about the plants and as far as what their sun requirements and get those planted show you guys the end result and show you my hummingbird video that I promised at the end of this video all right so let's get to it I first started with fresh potting soil and fertilizer already added in to all of my containers that I'm planting in. And the first plant I began with in this container here was the Speedwell, which is a full sun perennial. It's marked as four to 12 inches high and hardy to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Unfortunately, it didn't have the variety marked on the label, but I did look online and you can find Speedwell good for zones three through 11, depending on the variety. Then I decided to add two of the Pink Kisses Dianthus in with this Speedwell. Now the Pink Kisses Dianthus is blooming late spring through mid fall. It's marked as growing 12 to 16 inches high and 10 to 12 inches wide, hardy to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and is a full sun perennial that is fragrant and it is deer resistant. Now in my second pot here, I'm adding the Dark Matter Salvia, and this is marked as a full sun perennial. I did check online, and this variety is noted to be good in zones four through nine. It blooms late spring through fall and grows to 12 inches wide and 16 inches tall in bloom. And then last is the Capitan Purple and White. Now this is marked as part sun to sun, and it is fragrant, which I could definitely smell it as I was planting. It was quite lovely. It's marked online as hardy in zones 7 through 10 and blooms early spring through autumn. The growth is 12 to 18 inches high and marked as 14 to 18 inches wide. All right, you guys, I have everything planted. I think this Dianthus is so pretty. And then we have the Dianthus and Speedwell. I just cannot get over how beautiful that color is of the Speedwell. And I think that these two colors pair so nicely together. And then we have the Salvia as well. So nice. As you can tell, I really, really like purple a lot. And so I'm thrilled to be adding more purple to my garden with some pink as well. And I have my Hummingbird Feeder hanging and ready to go. I'll be filling up a couple more and adding that to the garden as well, but I'm so thrilled to have this done and cannot wait to welcome my hummingbirds back into the garden. And as promised, here is the video of me wearing the hummingbird ring last year, and I just cannot even express how neat it was to have the hummingbirds coming up as I was wearing that ring. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I am so excited to get these hummingbird feeders out and to get some hummingbird plants planted as well. Thank you guys so much again. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, happy gardening and goodbye.